Oh, shalom, Rastafari, and Malcolm Ledet. Malcolm uh, uh, Ledet, Adara Sachu, Wenda Mochachu. You know, um, to all of the brothers and Wenda Mochachin, and to all of I and I brothers and Ichid Totachin, and all the Natochachin, all of our mothers in the King of Kings and in His Christ. This is the Eve today. This is the Eve. This is one of my favorite pictures right here. We call it the Black Michelangelo Madonna, one of I and I favorite um, um, paintings, one of them, of the Black Mother and Child. And today, this... Um, Shabbat, this Shabbat E, Friday, January 6, 2012, is the actual, um, for us as Ethiopian Hebrews in the Ethiopic Church, this is the Metasebia, or the, we can say, or the memorial, let's take care of that, that right, say, so, yeah, or the memorial of Christ's birth or the birth of Yeshua, Yehoshua, more properly the birth of Yehoshua this particular day. There's a little reflection right there on the screen in the back. So we'll probably just leave that right there for right now or try to do this right here. Okay, so you can hopefully get to see this beautiful, um, here you go, this is probably even better. So you can get to see this beautiful image. Now this image, the artist of this particular image, we say a black Michelangelo, but in order to ascribe um, to the artist, the particular artist who this is, let's just uh, see if we have, uh, um, we apologize if we don't have that information. Okay, that's Tim Ashkar. It's actually Tim Ashkar. We call this our favorite, one of our favorite Michelangelo-style black Madonna and child posters and paintings from Tim Ashkar. And let's bring that up. Now we have, as you already know, there are other more traditional um, imagery. There's also a host of uh, whitewash, Eurocentric, um, kind of counterfeit, you know, re-spins off of the ancient black mother and child prototype. Now, a lot has been spoken of and disseminated concerning the whole mother and child or the goddess and child and, and ancient so-called mythology or ancient um, religion. Some call it paganism. And there's, there's a whole lot of information out there, data on it, but there's a lot of misconstruction, misinterpretation of that. And we don't have the opportunity to get into that subject matter in particular right here. This is um, actually just to announce to our brothers and sisters and to remind our brothers and sisters that this um, this uh, Ethiopian Christmas, this Lidet, Lidetta Jesus or Lidetta Christos, or some would say Lidetta Jesus Christos. More correctly, it's Lidetta Jesus. It's the birth of Yeshua or Yehoshua. Now, this is also a Torah portion, a sabbatical. This is the Sabbath. This is Friday, the 6th of 2012. So the Shabbat day. Actually, this whole time from even to even, and now it's about even time over here in this northeast region of um, America or Mystery Babylon where we're at right now. So it's the evening time right now. This is why we say Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam, as well as there's a Torah portion for us, and we'll probably go into a little bit more of a, a teaching on that. But what we found to be interesting, and we're still seeking to kind of compile this data and information together, but because time is of the essence and, and the timing, since this is the, both the Sabbath time as well as it is the Eve of the Metasebia or the memorial 
of the birth of Christ. And for us as Ethiopic uh, Christians or Christian, as um, elect Rastafari, as for the for the Orthodox and Orthodox uh, Christian or Orthodox Christianity, as well or among Orthodox Christians, and in particular for us as um, once lost but now found, Beta Israel. This is an important reflection. But why is it important, and what's the real connection with the seventh of January and Lidet? So we want to call this a Melkam Lidet, um, Ethiopic uh, Christmas, as well as a Rastafari reflection. But we wanted to have ones and ones um, recognize this particular painting here. And some of the Michelangelo and the Da Vinci, it's interesting because we looked over some um, sketches and it seems as though part of the real Da Vinci Code, or part of the real conspiracy is the fact that both Christ and his mother are black, That's or Afro, Afro-Shemitic, or are, we can say um, similar to the East African or Ethiopian, to put it simply and more direct. This is something we find in the All, All in the Family episode from the 1970s where Archie Bunker and the brother of, I think, George um, Jefferson are having a discussion about God being black and Jesus being black or, or an Ethiopian is how racially and nationally has been defined. Now, we know that Ethiopia is in the Bible. Ethiopia is one of the earliest and first most identifiable places on earth that are mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. And there are prophetic statements concerning Ethiopia, like Psalm 68, 31, um, speaking that uh, princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. Now, at this particular point in our sabbatical reading and feeding, brothers and sisters, and this is now we're moving um, to the, the Sabbath or uh, the Torah portion reading and feeding that you will see as uh, um, Vayihe, or improperly it might be read or misconstrued. Let's bring this up in our um, Torah portion um, booklet. Now, Vayigash was last week. Vayigash was last week. Now we also have the Ethiopic um, um, uh, from the Amharic, the Amharic of His Majesty the Mets of So hopefully you've downloaded um, the particular chart and the particular table, the Sabbath House readings and feedings. And within that particular document, you would know that we are up to the, if you go to number, I think it's about page uh, um, four and the twelfth Sabbath Torah portion reading and feeding in the Hebrew is known as Vayhi, 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 according to the Hebraic Vay, Vayhi, or Vayhi, 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 Vayhi. You might see it as Vayhi in one of the forms, but it's the Hebrew for, and he lived, and it's the first word of the parasha, and it's the 12th weekly Torah portion in the annual Hebraic or Jewish cycle of Torah or Rit, instructional readings and feedings, and it's also the last in the book of Genesis. It's the last in the book that some refer to as being the genealogy of Orset or the genealogy of Isis, and it's read well, first of all, it constitutes Genesis chapter 47, um, verse 28, to Genesis chapter 50, verse 26. And we as Hebrews and other Orthodox Jews uh, would read this particular Torah portion, reading and feeding in the diaspora or scattered away from the, the promised land in the 12th Sabbath after the holy day known as the Simchat Torah after Yorit Desita or Fishha Orit, generally in December or Jan January. Now, this particular year, it occurs in 
January. This particular holy day and time occurs in January. Now, for 2012, this, this coincides, this Torah portion, both the Torah portion and this being the eve of the Ethiopic or the Ethiopian churches and the Eastern churches and the Oriental churches remembrance or memorial to the birth of Christ is important. And we need to understand, begin by having a basic idea, the basic information, and then to put it together and then to overstand the significance and, and the correspondence now of this year, 2012, being both the Sabbath, you know how this New Year's this year in the West was on a Sunday. Now, we have one of our high um, holy days in the Ethiopic Church, which is the Ledeta Christos, or the birth of Christ, also occurring in, in, um, in correspondence with the Shabbat, with the Sendet, with the Sabbath day. Now, the Torah portion, reading and feeding, which is from Genesis 47, verse 28, to chapter 50, verse 26, is very significant. And we would like to go into a teaching on this particular subject matter, but what we wanted to do, first of all, is to um, say uh, a Melkam Lidet and to remind our brothers and sisters that um, uh, the Shabbat or the Sabbath uh, day, the day portion of it, what will be known as Saturday, the 7th of January, is our um, memorial and remembrance to the birth of the, the Christ child or the birth of Yehoshua, the birth of the true Jesus Christos. But some of the more specific details now from the Ethiopic church, some of the roots as we now um, get to the root is very, very interesting because it's not so much the day that Christ was born, but it was the announcement, both the announcement of his birth was made to Kedistin Gilmariam, in other words, the part that we have in uh, Luke. When we go to Luke's Gospel and the Annunciation, where the angel, uh, Malaikt Kedus Gabriel, announced to Kedistin Gilmariam that she would be overshadowed uh, by the Holy Spirit and that she would conceive a child of the Memphis Kedus, the Ruach Kodesh, that this is what actually occurred in this time frame nearly 2,000 years ago. Now, after Christ was born, his birth, or Yeshua's birth, actually took place around September 11th, the September 11th, the Ethiopian Addis Ahmed, or the feast or festival that is known in the Hebraic calendar as um, Yom HaTeruah, or the trumpets, the trumpets day, which inaugurates or initiates more, better. It starts off the fall festival season, which is we have Rosh Hashanah from the Hebraic or, or Judaic. We have uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. We have um, we have uh, Sukkot. Sukkot also occurs in this in gathering known as in gathering. Then we have that eighth day, the eighth day, the Shemini Atzeret, and then after that comes the Simchat Torah. Some connect the Simchat Torah or the joy of the Torah with the Shemeni Atzeret, and that is that eighth day after the Sukkot. And they said on that particular eighth day, according to the ancient calculations, nearly 2,000 years ago, that's when Christ was, um, that's when the, 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 the Christ child or Jesus, Yeshua as a child, was circumcised on that particular eighth day, and we have this also in the Wengel, Wengel uh, Zelukas, or the Gospel of um, Luke, which concerns, um, um, I think it was, uh, uh, was it Hannah, Anna, Anna, and uh, Simeon, which was the old um, 
man and woman who had devoted their lives and wanted to live and ask Ha Elohim to be able to see the Messiah, and they had given given a blessing. That's also in the in the gospel. So when we start to put this all together in its proper context, a um a bigger picture actually emerges, and and it starts to connect a lot of the dots, uh, or a lot of the so-called gray areas become more clearly, you understand, um, illuminated from the gospel story from the scriptures and even connects us with much of the ancient story out of Egypt. Now, also a connection with this um, Sabbath or Senbet for, for the, 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 the 12th Senbet. This will be the 12th Sabbath in this cycle of Torah portion reading and feedings for us as Rastafari, for us as, as Ethiopian Hebrews of the Society of His Majesty in tune with the ancient order, the ancient order that even the Christ or Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior, observed himself where he went into the synagogue of Nazareth and he read from the Torah scroll reading and feeding, which shows that this um, practice that we keep is in tune with the testimony of Jesus Christos, the testimony of uh, Jesus Christ, based on the teaching for us as Rastafari, based upon the teaching of his imperial magic at Amawi, Haile Selassie. Now, with that being said, what we like to do is go a little bit forward, but just put a couple of connections out here, and hopefully we'll have more time to um, go into some of the various presentation levels and, and to bring it to bring some of the additional evidence that we have to really put together some of the key and significant points concerning both the birth of Christ from the, or the birth of Yeshua, Jesus, known as the Christ, Jesus, Yenaz Aretu Jesus, or, or Jesus of Nazareth, or Jesus the, the Netzer, the branch, as well as to connect the ancient astrology or astronomy, and then to have that now, the actual evidence of that, which is still sealed up in the heavens. I mean, we can go back to 2,000 years ago and see the position of different stars, therefore putting together the biblical story and understand the astrotheological significance as well as the, the racial significance of Christ, Jesus, Yeshua, being of the Ethiopian race of the Jewish or Judaic or Hebraic peoples, as well as his mother, known as the Black Madonna, from the earliest periods of Christianity. And now we can then see the full picture. You understand? We can see the full picture, and then we can understand the significance of it. And then what we're living begins to really make sense. And what we're experiencing now really begins to make sense. And the, and the scriptures now becomes more open, you understand, more open to our, our overstandings, our understandings, our comprehension, so forth and so on. So this is just a brief reflection, a Rastafari or a Rastafariyawiyan um, reflection on the Ledeta Iesus Ze Nazaretu, or the, the Ledeta Christos, the, the birth of Christ, January 7th, the significance, and the particular significance now, because of the alignment of heaven and earth in this particular year, 2012, and this is still the first six days in this particular year, and the birth of Christ now, or the announcement of the birth of Christ, which is the key of understanding what September, of what September 11th is to us, as well as understanding that if we count nine months from the announcement by the angel Gabriel to the virgin or the maiden, the Dingil Maria, on 
January 7th, and now we're using January in the Western interpretation, but we can go back to the Hebrew, we can go back to the Ethiopic, the calculation, the counting of time. We can also look at the astral and the, and the heavenly positions of God's calendar, looking at the stars and looking at the particular different constellations, and we know how they were interpreted in ancient times, even as far so-called back in antiquity as ancient Egypt. And now that will now also add further significance to the true roots of not just Christina or Christianity, but also of the true and the faithful Hebraic um, tradition, which we would call the Beta Israel, or the, the, the Falasha, or the, Ethi, the Ethiopian Jewish tradition. And, of course, we've already connected um, ancient witnesses of the fact that the, the Jews of the Bible, the real Jews of 2,000 years ago, were of the race of the Ethiopians, according one reference, according to Tacitus, you know, and according to the Roman historian Tacitus. So, therefore, this image that you are looking at would be both right and accurate with the ancient history, with the, the spirituality, and hopefully can help us as once lost but now found Beta Israel to um, uh, uh, renew and restore the half of our uh, the half that we've lost, uh, but restore that half of our 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 mind, that half of our own um, psyche, restore our souls. In other words, this is how Adonai, this is how the true Lord, our black Lord, helps us to restore our souls in spirit and in truth. So once again, Melkam Ledet, Adarasachu, brothers and sisters. Shalom Rastafari. Stay tuned. Yah willing. Much more to come.